the Learning Commons this afternoon. We have had a full month of October of all of you getting to come down to the library, use it as a Learning Commons, learn other things, not just to check out books, right? Yeah. We got to do lots of things. We got to practice our keyboarding skills on the big computers. We got to learn about the weather on the iPads. We got to learn about being a good citizen when you worked with your teachers and the books and you got to make that paper chain that's going to remind you about being a good citizen, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. And so now we're going to end our month with a guest speaker. Our guest speaker today is Phil Schreck. Phil is my husband first. And second, he's the dad to my kids. And third, he's a meteorologist at KSFY. <coughs> he does the weather on TV. And he's going to be your expert on weather today. Because when we were listening to all those books on the iPads about lightning and wind and hurricanes and strange but true weather, all of that stuff has to do with some of where we live in Sioux Falls and some not where we live. So Phil's gonna help us kind of figure out what do we have in Sioux Falls and you know what, the seasons change and what kind of weather do we have in all those different seasons and what are the different kinds of clouds that we have and you had a bunch of questions that you wrote, didn't you? Some of you turned in questions asking Phil some questions. Well, by the time you leave today, you're gonna know all the answers. Does that sound good? Yeah. All right, so let's give him a hand. Today we got to come in, all the first graders at Cleveland Elementary, and we got to listen to our very own personal meteorologist, Phil Schreck, who is our librarian's husband, and he got to tell us all about weather. We've been learning about weather and different conditions, different seasons in our classrooms, and so this was kind of a finishing up product of what um, weather is all about in the seasons, and so the kids got a chance to make their own questions up so that they could ask Mr. Schreck when he came, and so that was kind of our wrap up. Sometimes twisters can form big tornadoes and we will almost never have tornadoes in this place. I mean, I mean, I mean hurricanes in this place because there is not a lot of water here. Not at all. Our focus for this month, I've been working with first grade kids to learn about what they're doing in the classroom but expanding it into the library. We want this to become more of a learning commons where there's more learning going on and taking place than just stopping down to check books in and out and have a, a lesson from the librarian. We want it to be more of um, expounding on what's happening in the classroom and reaching those common cores and enriching and expanding and practicing what they're studying. And this month that happened to be they were working on um, asking and answering questions about the weather and being a good citizen and so when they came to the library we have six first grade classrooms and they all got to visit we call it the learning commons three extra times so they besides their normal library class they got to come three additional times and I pulled resources um, so they could see that the library has more than just the books we've got uh, the technology, the iPads, the computers, we've got the smart board, we've got the Google Docs and presentations and we can supply all of these things beyond the, just the books for the kids to learn while they're here. And so our culmination of them working on the answering and asking questions about the weather was they got to actually have the meteorologist Phil Schreck come and answer the questions that they had. And of course he was asking them questions too so then they were getting that side where you have to ask and answer questions about the weather. Well, thank you all for being here. I, know, I see some of you have your hands raised up already, but we'll have time to do some questions later towards the end, okay? Now, again, my name is Phil Schreck, and I understand that you guys have learned about weather in your class. Is that right? Yeah. Most of you? So do you think you guys could come up and do, do a weather forecast on TV if you wanted to? Yeah. If you need to? All right. You know all about it, huh? All right. Well, first, let me talk a little bit about what I do at KSFY. I've been a meteorologist. You know what that word means? A meteorologist is a really long word that means a somebody who studies weather. And that's what I do. I've been at KSFY for 25 years. Long time. Yeah, that is me. Doesn't it look like me? No? That picture was taken a couple of years ago, so. Might look. Yeah. So what do I do? Well, 
the first thing that I do is I give you the weather forecast on TV. And I do that in front of a green wall. See that right there? Now, if you ever see me do weather on TV, it looks like I'm standing in front of a weather map, right? But, and if you haven't seen that, watch, watch tonight and you'll see what I'm talking about. I'm not standing in front of a, of a weather map. I'm standing in front of a big green wall and there's no map behind there. But, you, but you, so you, what am I doing? I'm looking, see this TV monitor right there? There's also a TV monitor on this side that you don't see in this picture. And I'm actually looking at myself doing the weather on TV. And I have an example of that. I can show you some video of me doing that from the news yesterday. So here, I, this is yesterday when I was doing the news. Now see, now if you look, look here, you see me standing in front of that weather map. That's what I'm seeing in the TV over here. And I'm just pointing at the weather map that's on the TV. Because there's nothing back there but a green wall. Do you, see, do you understand what I'm saying there? Now, if, if I didn't have that TV like that one, on the other side as well, I wouldn't know what was behind me. And I have to make sure that I don't wear anything green because if I wore something that color, you know what would happen? What? You would see the weather map on top of me. So I have to make sure that if, if I wear anything this color, this map will show up on top of it. So I have to be careful not to do that, okay? Now, when I, when I first started doing weather on TV, a lot of times they use blue wall, but they, use, they switch to green now because not a lot of people will wear that, that real bright green color for, uh, to, as a, like a suit or a, a shirt or something like that. Well, I became interested in weather when I was in about 7th or 8th grade. And when I was that age, I was living here in Oklahoma. So here's South Dakota. This is where we live right here. Oops, can we go back? Sorry, I got to remember not to touch that. I live, I live down here in Oklahoma. And see this yellow area right here that's circled? That's actually sometimes we call that Tornado Alley. That's where the most tornadoes happen anywhere in the world. Not just in the country, but anywhere in the world, we get the more tornadoes than anybody else. And o Oklahoma and Texas have really have the most even within this area. Yes, South Dakota, where we live, is in Tornado Alley, but we don't get as many tornadoes as they do down in Oklahoma and Texas and Kansas and places like that. So that's how I became really interested in doing the weather. Because when I was you know, growing up, I would see all these storms coming in, and I would wonder what was causing those storms, what was making them happen. So that's why I became interested in being a weatherman. So what are the different types of weather? Well, you probably haven't heard of this, but one of the things that that again got me interested in weather, of course, is a tornado. And again, we had a lot of these down in Oklahoma. And I can show you a little video of that. You've probably seen video of a tornado before, but of course, that's what they look like. They look like, you know, they come straight down from the cloud down to the ground and they cause all, all kinds of problems. They cause a lot of wind, they cause a lot of rain, sometimes they cause flooding. So that that is why I became interested in, in weather, because of tornadoes, really, that we used to get a lot down in Oklahoma and Texas. Well, what are some other kinds of weather? Well, let's go back and check that out. We, uh, you know, tornadoes usually happen in the springtime, sometimes in the early summer, but we're away from that now. So we're more into, you know, we're into summer now, where you get more like rain shower activity and things like that. Did I touch the wrong thing again? Um, we get rain showers in the summertime and even in the fall, but we don't get really the tornado kind of stuff anymore. It's just more of a general rain sometimes. And do you guys like it when it's rainy outside or, or do you like it better when it's, when it's snowing? Like or, it. huh, do you? Okay. Well, do, we, do, you think we'd ever get, do you think we'd ever get snow in the summertime? Why, why is that? Why would we, yeah, why is that? What do you have to have to get snow? Yeah. But what does it have to be to, to get snow? Why wouldn't we get snow in the summertime? Oh, yeah. Because the ground will be too hot. Well, yeah, and the air too. Okay. Well, again, in the fall, fall is hurricane season. You know what hurricanes are? No. Do you, hurricanes are these huge storms that happen over the ocean and over the Gulf of Mexico. Do you think we'd ever get a hurricane around here? Who wants to tell me why that is? Why wouldn't we get a tornado or a hurricane here? Yeah. Uh, there's not a lot of water That's right. 
you have to have a lot of water. And that's where hurricanes form, over large bodies of like really warm ocean water. We would not get that around here because we don't have enough water. I mean, yes, we have rivers, we have lakes, we have uh, you know, streams, but we don't have enough water to have a hurricane, okay? Yeah, and they, they always happen over the, over the ocean. Well, now we're getting to this time of the year right here where we get blizzards. What is a blizzard? Huh? Well, I bet we're gonna see an example of one right here. What is a blizzard? Who wants to tell me what a blizzard is? Yeah, go ahead, in the orange. Yeah. And then it like gets too cold so it like turns it turns into ice. So you get you get snow and cold, but what else do you need to get a blizzard? What do you need to get a blizzard? Yeah. Um less snow. Yeah, what else? I'm looking for one more thing. How about way in the back there in the striped shirt? That's right. You need a lot of wind to blow that snow around. And that's why we get blizzard warnings when the, it's snowing and it's really windy and you can't see anything. Thankfully, we don't get too many of those around here, but uh, we are getting, getting into that time of the year where we could get some blizzards, okay? Um, but then, all, of course, all year long, what's our favorite kind of weather, right? It's sunshine, right? And here's a video. Do you think that's a sunrise or sunset going on right there? Yeah, because it's going up, right? So that means it's a sunrise. If it was a sunset, it'd be going down, okay? So that's, those are the different types of weather that you guys hear about a lot. And just to give you a little preview, you're probably wondering about what's going to happen on a Halloween, right? It's only, what, two days away? Uh -huh. Well, it's been gloomy, it's been wet, it's been kind of yucky outside. But just to give you a little sneak peek, it's going to be nice on Halloween, okay? So... Maybe not so much in the morning. When you come to school, we might have a little bit of rain and some clouds, but I think by the afternoon and by trick-or-treat time, it's gonna, be, it's gonna be nice, okay? So we have, that, we have that going for us. In the classroom, we've used some of the weather books that we, we can check out from our library. We also, the whole unit is on the seasons, the weather, different patterns that we see throughout the country and the world. Um, we've done a lot of um, little just library books, reading books. We have um, books in our book room where kids can read about weather and different things. And so they get to read at their level. They also get to hear maybe what books that they can't read on their own, but we read with them as a teacher or to them as a teacher. And um, they just, they have lots of questions all the time. And so we thought that if we could bring on in a real meteorologist who works with weather every day, that would mean something more to them. And so that's, that's why we did it. Well, first of all, we have we have our little stands that we're putting iPads on. We have iPads, one for each table. When we can have the teacher come in and work with me, when we collaborate and work together, we can break the kids down into smaller groups. And I have my assistant, so we can make them even smaller groups. So um, one group can get on the iPads. They have these cool stands, so they're not going to be falling over. They're more durable. And then they have headphones, which when the kids put the headphones on, they're in their own world. They're just zoned in on what they're learning about. So we've been able to offer eBooks on the iPads, and each child gets their own iPad when they're in here in our small groups. We also have just the desktop computers so the kids can work individually and have their headphones on and be working on specific um, tasks that enrich or they can practice what they're learning with the eBooks or keyboarding skills as well. And then over in our quiet corner, we have had the teacher working with a small group, really honing in on the skills that they've been working in the Common Core in their classroom, whether it's um, higher level thinking skills, digging a little deeper with its uh, flannel boards or with supplies to create, they created a citizenship chain, paper chain. What does it take to become a good citizen? And what does that look like? And, um, sound like when you're in this environment and learning with your friends and with your teachers. Now you guys have probably talked about the different kinds of clouds, have you? Do you remember some of the names of those clouds? Well, let's go through those. One of these has got a really long name. Can anybody say that? Who wants to try to pronounce that? Huh? You want to try it? Go ahead. Come on. No? Okay, who else wants to try it? Yeah? You're the weather girl, right? Yeah? They're called Columbus <laughs> That's close. That's close. That's, that's called a cumulonimbus cloud. Oh, yeah. that, <laughs> it's 
that you did. That's right. Cumulonimbus and mist clouds are the kinds of clouds that grow really, really high in the sky. And they cause, that's where you get thunderstorms. Okay, anytime you get a thunderstorm, you're going to have a cumulonimbus cloud. Okay, so I'm going to probably start calling it a Columbus cloud here on, on the TV sometime. But this is a cumulus cloud, and that also sounds kind of like that, right? But a cumulus cloud, it's not the really big stormy kind of cloud. A cumulus cloud is just a real nice looking white puffy clouds that, and a lot of times we call them fair weather cumulus clouds. They look like cotton balls floating around, yeah? yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a lot. These are the kind of clouds that you look at that change shapes a lot and they look like different things, okay? Well, what's the next type, type of cloud? Stratus cloud. A, that's what we have today. It's that low, gray, kind of dreary, yucky cloud that makes you, makes you just not want to go outside. That's what a stratus cloud is. And if there's rain coming from that cloud or snow coming from a stratus cloud, we actually have another name for that. It's called a nimbostratus. Nimbo actually means precipitation. It means rain or snow. So today we have nimbostratus clouds because that's probably why you didn't get to go outside for recess today, right? Because it was raining outside. Well, you can thank, you can thank the nimbostratus clouds for that, right? And these are called, who wants to try that name? Huh? Who wants to try it? Yeah? Circus. No? Circus? Close. How about way back there? Yeah. Cirrus. That's right. These are called cirrus clouds. And these clouds are really, these clouds were actually made out of ice. Did you know that? Even, even in the summertime, those clouds are way up high in the sky. They look kind of like feathers. They look like wispy clouds. They're, even in the summertime when it's 100 degrees outside, you could have cirrus clouds up in the sky, but they're actually made of ice because it's really cold up there higher up in the sky. Okay? So those are, the, those are the types of clouds that we talk about. Stratus, cumulus, cirrus, and cumulonimbus. Okay, and sometimes Columbus. Yes. Well, some, some clouds are, there's snow, even in the summertime. Some of those clouds that produce rain and thunderstorms, there's, that actually starts out as snow way up high in the sky. And as it falls down to the warmer air, it does turn into rain. Okay. All right. What do we have? Oh, yes. Weather instruments. Did you guys talk about weather instruments? No. Okay. What, we need things to measure. We need to measure temperature. We need to measure wind. We need to measure air pressure. So we have instruments that do that. And one of the instruments that we use is called a wind vane. What do you think a wind vane tells us? Who wants to tell me what a wind vane does? How about right here? Yeah, you're right here in the red. Yep. I think it, I think it tells you how fast the wind is going. That's close. That's a, different, that's a different instrument. What's a wind vane tell you? It doesn't tell you the, how fast it's going. It's telling you something else. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, the black. Yep. <laughs> what does a wind vane tell you? Not yet, not yet. How about way in the back with the, is that a vent, Captain America shirt on? Or, yeah, what is that? Oh, yeah, okay. Well, I'll tell you what it does. A wind vane tells you the direction that the wind is coming from. So it, it tells you if it's coming from the northwest or the north or the east or the south. Well, the, the, what you guys were talking about, I don't know if we have a picture of an anemometer. An anemometer is a long, another long word. An anemometer tells you how fast the wind is blowing. Okay, so those two instruments we use to take wind measurements, a wind vane and an anemometer. And this actually, I think, is two in one. Um, this, this instrument here will turn and tell you which direction the wind is coming from. And as the, this propeller will turn, and the faster it turns, it tells you the faster the wind is coming from. So that's actually both, I think. Now, a rain gauge tells you what? What does a rain gauge tell you? Yeah? If I have a rain gauge in my backyard and, and it has this measurement on it, one inch, two inch, three inches, four inches, what does that tell me? How, yeah, how much water, how much rain we got. So that, yeah, that tells you how much rain you got. That's a rain gauge, okay? Now, what about, have you guys driven by on Minnesota Avenue, if you've driven by the airport, you've seen that looks like a kind of like a soccer ball circle thing. 
That's called, that's Doppler radar, and that's what this is. A radar it a, is it actually an instrument that turns around and it tells us where the rain and snow is. This is actually a radar picture, and this looks to me like a hurricane that was, uh, I can't tell where that is. It looks like it's in the Gulf of Mexico, but that looks like a hurricane that was, it might be even uh, Katrina, it almost looks like that. But that tells you how, where the rain is and how strong the rain is. So you see like the blue, that's the lighter rain. And then once you get into the yellows and the oranges and the reds, that tells you how strong, that tells you that there's really, really heavy rain in there. Okay. Oh, did it? Okay. Oh, yeah. That's what it looked like if you were up in the sky looking down. So uh, we probably should get to the questions. I'm not sure what's next. We should get to the questions. Oh, this is where I work. This is the com these are all the computers that I work with at KSFY. So um, this is this a picture I took yesterday. So I had a little pumpkin on my map for Halloween. Um, so, but I said, so I sit here and I use all these computers to kind of help me figure out what the weather's doing. And then this computer here I used to make my weather maps. So all the maps that you see behind me when I'm doing the weather, they're all done in the, uh, what we call the weather center. We call it the severe weather center. And it's all done right here at KSFY. Okay. Now, if you want to be a meteorologist, who wants to? I know you do. Who else? Okay, a lot of you? All right, that's great. Yeah, who likes math? <laughs> really? Do you? Okay, that's great. You have to like computers. I bet you all do. Do you like reading? Huh? Do you love the weather? Yeah. You have to love the weather to be a meteorologist. And you need to do well in school, of course, and that's for everything, no matter what you want to be. And then you got to go to college. I went to college at Iowa State. That's what, this, that's what that uh, logo is right there. And I learned meteorology at Iowa State. Okay. Every morning they kept coming and saying, is, is, is Mr. Shrek coming? Is Mr. Shrek coming? So every morning in our class we have a meteorologist who goes to the window and checks the weather. So they, they were familiar with the meteorologist term. And so they were excited when they actually got to see a real one. Do you want to be a meteorologist when you get older? I've even been talking about it a lot of times. Of course I do. I also want to be a dentist. When we talk about some of our science um, standards and things that we have, that's one of them that we yes. cover. And it just talks about, it gives them an introductory lesson to, you know, what weather is about. And as I said, it, it, it combines weather, seasons, different types of, you know, things like that. So that's, that's one of the standards that we cover in our first grade curriculum. What does senior meteorologist mean? That's, that's what they call me at KSFY. Well, that means I've been there the longest. And it also means I'm, I'm the oldest, so that's what senior meteorologist means. How do you know the weather before it comes? Well, that's a good question because that's what I went to college for, to learn how to do that. There's a lot of information that I go through at KSFY. You saw those computers earlier. I use all those computers that gives me computer information. It gives me radar pictures that you saw. Remember with that hurricane? I look at radar pictures, I look at satellite pictures, I look at weather maps, and I use all of that and all the things that I learned in college to try to decide what the weather's gonna do in the next few days. How many people work with you? Well, um, normally I just work by myself, uh, unless there's bad weather going on, then we have people come in and help out. But most of the time I'm there by myself, but when it comes time to actually do the weather on TV, there's a lot of people in the TV studio. There's uh, uh, I would say probably 10 people in the studio to help make the TV show look the way it's supposed to, okay? Um, what did you do to become a meteorologist? Well, we talked about that a little bit earlier. You have to go to college and study and, and uh, take all these meteorology classes and learn how to be a meteorologist, okay? Uh, does it hail with every tornado? I would say about nine, most of the time, yes. There are probably a few instances once in a while where you could get a tornado without hail, but most of the time you are going to get hail when there's a tornado. Do you like being on TV? Yes, I do. I enjoy that. That's what I've been doing for, I've been here at KSFI for 25 years and I was in Cedar Rapids, Iowa doing it for two more years. So yes, I, I enjoy being on TV. Um, what's the most dangerous weather we have here in Sioux Falls? 
Well, you know what? We get everything in Sioux Falls, don't we? we remember the ice storm we got last, that last spring? So we get, we get ice storms, we get snowstorms, we get tornadoes, we get blizzards, we get, sometimes we can get flooding rains. So, but I would say the most dangerous, the most dangerous kind of weather would be a tornado. I think that's probably the most dangerous we can get, but thankfully that doesn't happen all that often. Boys and girls, Mr. Schreck's gonna ask you to, to not visit with your neighbor. I know you're excited, <laughs> but some of your neighbors wanna hear what he's saying so we can finish up. All right. <laughs> Do meteorologists fly in helicopters to look at weather? I bet some do. I never have, but it probably wouldn't. It's probably not a good idea, though, especially if it's stormy to be in a helicopter, because when you have a storm going on, um, it can toss that helicopter around. So it's probably not the best idea. It's probably a better idea to be in a, in a helicopter after the storm is gone if you want to look at what happened to an area. For example, if a tornado moved through, sometimes they'll get in a helicopter and fly over it to see what kind of damage there was, and if it really was a tornado, okay? How do you give us the forecast so quickly when you're on TV? Um, well, you know, I don't know. I only have about three minutes. When I, I'm at work, I go to work about two o'clock in the afternoon. I don't go on TV till about five o'clock. So I have about three hours to get ready and to prepare the weather. But when I'm actually on TV, I'm only on for about three minutes. So I have to give you a lot of information by then uh, in that time. Um, so it's just something that I do over the years that I guess I'm just used to doing uh, pretty quickly. Is it hard being a meteorologist? Um, sometimes it is uh, because sometimes there is a weather forecast that I just don't know what the weather's going to do, to be honest with you. Most of the time I think I do, but there are some times where I'm like, I, I don't even know what's going to happen. But, but that's... Get that on tape. <laughs> sometimes, okay? <laughs> But especially when there's snowstorms, it's really hard sometimes to tell where it's going to snow and where it's going to rain. Sometimes you can get rain in one place and about 10 miles away, it's heavy snow. And that can make a big difference to some people for travel and work and things like that. So that's when it gets really hard. But most of the time it's not because I enjoy I doing it. I enjoy doing it. What kind of weather do you like best? I like a nice, calm spring day when the flowers are coming up and it's sunny outside, there's a light breeze. I would, have, I would like that every day, okay? Uh, I'm, I'm past the point where I get excited about storms and stuff. I mean, I, I'll leave that to the younger guys. Um, is it going to rain or snow tomorrow? Yes, it's probably gonna rain. It's gonna rain again tomorrow. Um, and we, there, there could be a couple of snowflakes tonight that's not gonna add up to anything, but we're all gonna get rain tomorrow and maybe a little bit Thursday morning, but I, like I told you earlier, by trick-or-treat time, it should be pretty nice. So Thursday afternoon and Thursday evening is going to be pretty nice. Okay? See you later. Bye-bye. Thanks. You guys were great. See you later. He's a, he's a cameraman. Or,